Let's assume that you're going to put a deposit in a bank. Therefore, you will get a nominal rate, for example, equal to 5%. So what does it mean that you will receive an interest rate of 5%? It means that your money will increase by 5% after one year. And that's why this refers to change in money. Does it mean that we can buy more goods and services by 5% after one year? Of course not. Why? Because we have inflation rate. So let's assume that inflation rate is 2%. What does it mean? It means that prices will increase by 2% after a year. Therefore, the change in prices is 2%. Therefore, if we get nominal rate minus inflation rate, this will give us our real interest rate. So 5 minus 2%, this will give us 3%. So what does it mean? It means that after one year, our money will increase by 5%, which is the nominal rate, and prices will increase by 2%. Therefore, our real rate of 3%, it means that we will buy more goods and services by 3%, which is called the change in purchasing power parity or purchasing power capacity. So let's assume that, for example, in the following countries, the nominal rate is 20%, but inflation rate is 45%. So what will be our real rate? Our real rate will be negative 25%, which means if you are going to put a deposit in a bank for one year, because inflation is bigger than the nominal rate, this means that after one year, you will be better off or worse off? You will be worse off. And that's why your purchasing power parity will be lower by 25%. You will buy less goods and services by 25%. And that's why nominal rate is always positive, while real rate could be positive or negative or equal to zero. It depends on the relationship between our nominal rate and inflation rate. So, as we mentioned here, our real rate is equal to nominal rate minus inflation rate. And this could be related to interest rate in a bank or any rate of return you get from an investment. And that's why it's very important that we focus on real rate when inflation rate is very high. So, this is the definition of real rate. But if we would like to be accurate, we need to use a formula which is called the Fisher equation formula. So our real, real rate is equal 1 plus nominal rate divided by 1 plus inflation rate minus 1. Or we can rearrange this formula and we can write it as our real rate is equal to nominal rate minus inflation rate divided by 1 plus inflation rate. So if we're going to use the same example here, our real rate is equal 1 plus nominal rate of 5% divided by 1 plus inflation rate of 2%. All of this minus 1, it will give us 2.94%. As you notice here, the real rate from Fisher equation is very close to the real rate from the definition, from the concept. And that's why it will be very close. But when it comes to calculations, please use Fisher equation because it's more accurate. We can also use the other formula of Fisher equation which is our real rate is equal nominal rate 5% minus inflation rate 2% divided by 1 plus inflation rate 2%. This will give us a real rate of 2.94%.